All right, well, this happened to me 14 years ago when I was in fourth grade. Back then, it was very common that every morning before school started, kids would be dropped off at the park, and from there, we would walk to the school before the bell rang at 8.30 a.m. Keep in mind, the park is right next door to my old elementary school, so there really wasn't much of a distance or any danger for that matter. One and only road that led to the park and school had lots of traffic and people walking around. So my mom drops me off, and since we were pretty early, and my friends were already walking toward the swing set in the park, I told her I would go there with them and wait for the bell. Mom said it was fine, but to not get to class late or else I'd be grounded. I agreed and said goodbye to my mom and headed straight to my friends. Now in this park, way in the back, there is or was, I haven't been there in years, a wooded area that you can go in for maybe half a block and then you run into a fence that separates a farm and the park. It was a very cool area to run and play in and the swing set where my friends were hanging out at was maybe 30 feet away from the trees. As I was getting closer to my friends, I saw something shift next to a tree and I stopped to get a better look at whatever it was. That's when I saw him. A tall man with greasy brown hair and dark clothes. He was way in the back of the park in the tree line, just looking around not doing anything that would cause alarm. So I dismissed him as just a man walking around or one of the farm helpers that we would usually see from time to time, feeding the chickens or fixing the fence. I went on to talk to my friends, but I kept getting a bad feeling. Fortunately, my parents were very good at teaching me to listen to my instincts and be aware of my surroundings whenever I am near strangers. Feeling a bit weird about that man, I told my friends that we should start to head out to the entrance of the school. But because it was 7.45, they didn't want to get stuck in the cafeteria. I started to get upset because the bad feeling I had was getting worse. I felt kind of trapped and it was clear to my friends that something was up with me, but they dismissed it as me being in one of my bad day moods and continued to goof off and be loud. I looked around, still feeling nervous, and looked towards the woods. He was still there, except this time he was looking at us. He had a cold look on his face, and I could tell he was angry. That's when he saw me staring, and I quickly looked away trying to play it off. Unfortunately, that gained his attention, and he slowly made his way to us. When he got close, he smiled at us, and in a very friendly voice, started to ask questions about what we liked, what kind of video games we liked to play, what school we went to, stuff like that. I stayed quiet and just listened to my dumb friends answer his questions without hesitation. The man then turns to me, the only girl in the group and with a creepy smile tells me that I have beautiful black hair and a pretty face. I quietly and nervously thanked him without looking at him and moved closer to my best friend Josh. He was a sixth grader and the eldest of the bunch. When Josh saw how nervous I was because of the man, he held my hand and moved me behind him. The man looked annoyed that Josh did that and moved around him to get closer to me. At this point, I looked over to our other friends and they finally realized that something was wrong, but they were just as afraid as I was to do or say anything. The men kept saying that I was very beautiful and that I looked like a pretty doll. I just kept saying all these compliments that a stranger should never tell a little kid, especially without parents present, and even that's iffy. At this point, my instincts were telling me to run or to cry out for help, but I was scared and I couldn't move at all. The man then started to touch my hair while complimenting me and said how he would like to take me home, how I would be a special little doll and that he would buy me toys and lots of pretty things. He then grabbed me by the arm and pulled me close to him. Thankfully, when he did that, it snapped Josh out of his fear of what was going on, and he pulled me back towards him fast, and we all took off running. He was so fast that I guess the man didn't expect it. The man cursed and yelled and started running after us. I swear it felt like we ran forever to the entrance, and I felt somewhat relieved that we were that much closer to the school and to safety, but the man was still behind us. I was sure that he was going to catch up and hurt us for running away. But when I looked back, he had stopped near a bench with a hate-filled look on his face. We finally made it out of the park and just ran straight to the entrance of the school, where one of our teachers, Miss D, was barely making her way out to help with the street crossing. When we saw her, we ran to her and I just collapsed on the floor, crying while the boys told Miss D what happened and what the man looked like. Miss D immediately informed the office. The entire school went on lockdown and the cops were called. I stayed glued to Josh while we spoke to the cops and waited for our parents to arrive. And thankfully, the teachers were very understanding of why I needed to be close to my best friend and left us alone. My mom and dad were so scared and furious that this man had tried to take me away. We're thankful that Josh reacted quickly and led us to safety. After that incident, the school took steps to make sure all kids were dropped in front of the school safely. 
school district sent out letters to parents telling them to not allow us to be in the park unsupervised, and a patrol car was assigned to our school. Although the cops searched for the man, he was never found, which terrifies me, and to this day, I can still remember the look in his eyes as he saw us get away. I don't know what would have happened to me had Josh not have been there to protect me, and I am so thankful I had and still have such an amazing friend looking out for me. This happened around this time last year, when I was a junior in high school. There was this kid in my first period, which was criminal justice, who never talked. Not to be rude, but he was your stereotypical, don't mess with that kid, or he'll pull a gun out on you kind of kid. Whenever someone in my class would talk to him, he always had a snarky or disrespectful comment to say. He never did his assignments, and always had this stern look on his face. He was also very strange. I think he was socially awkward and didn't know how to talk to people each time he would talk to us, it was uncomfortable for us and him. One morning, this kid came to school and acted out of the ordinary. He sat in a different seat and didn't have his backpack on him. After my teacher took attendance, he left the room to go to the portable next door to us, which is also a criminal justice class. The kid walks out of the class without telling anyone and didn't come back. Once first period ended, I forgot all about him and went to my chemistry class when we were suddenly put into a code red. We were all confused and scared since we had just had our drill last week and had no information for this lockdown. My entire class hid in the chemicals closet for about two hours during this whole thing. I remember getting texts from my mom asking if I was okay and I asked her if she knew anything about it and she didn't. At around 11 of that day, we were notified that we were currently in a code green and we were able to go on with our day without knowing why we were in a lockdown in the first place. When we went back to school the next day, we asked my criminal justice teacher what had happened. He told us that the mean kid in our class ditched after he took attendance and walked half a mile to the gas station up the street from school and robbed it. Authorities were called and the SWAT team arrested him in the woods surrounding our school where he ditched his backpack. This kid was armed with a loaded gun on his person during class, which I was in. My teacher said that he dropped his backpack on the trail in the woods so that when he was done robbing the gas station that he could blend in with the rest of us at school and that no one would suspect him. A really messed up part of this is that he was wearing a killer clown mask while he did it. And this was during the time that people were going around dressed up as clowns and chasing cars. It's unsettling for me to know that I was in the same room as this kid before he committed that crime and had a loaded gun literally on him. Someone could have pissed this kid off and he could have shot up the school or who knows what. We later found out that he had also had charges for drug possession and for beating up his mom before he robbed the gas station. I don't know what this kid has gone through, but I hope he gets some help. I also find it kind of ironic that he decides to ditch the class to commit the crime that has a cop as the teacher. It's 10.11pm right now. I'm inside a classroom on the third floor of my school because as the title says, we're on lockdown. Right now, everyone is sleeping, even the guy watching over us. The tears, adrenaline, and fear that fueled our day took its toll, and we are all knocked out cold. But before I continue, I'm sure you have questions, and I may have answers. So let me start before he wakes up. I'm a senior in high school. I live in a fairly safe neighborhood with the exception of only danger being drug deals. The whole thing started at about 1.25pm, passing period between 6th and 7th. It was a typical school day, no special events happening or nothing out of the ordinary. My girlfriend and I were one of the last people to leave the classroom since she had to ask the teacher a question and being her boyfriend, I waited for her. We went to the second floor to get my AP environmental science textbook before heading to the third floor. We had about three minutes left in our seven minute passing periods. We got to the third floor of the school and in a small hallway with two stairways on opposite ends of the hall. As we walked down the hall, I noticed a kid next to me wearing very dark and loose clothing. Weird, I thought to myself. I looked straight and noticed another kid heading down the stairs, wearing almost the same thing. We parted ways to our classes. Mine was located in the very back of the school, the S-Wing. Class began and so did our daily routine. There was a kid named Matt who sat in the back of the classroom and mainly kept to himself. Never participated and always does projects alone. For whatever odd reason, he was dressed like he was ready for a baseball game, with a jersey and a baseball bag with bats. Pretty damn odd if you ask me. The teacher asked us to pull out our homework and we complied. 
That's when it all happened. Suddenly, we heard popping noises in rapid succession from down below and screaming. What the hell is going on? One of my classmates asked. We went to leave the classroom to investigate. Just then, Matt stood up and clocked the kid across the head with one of the bats. He flew onto the floor and Matt pulled out a gun from his jacket. Get the fuck on the floor, he screamed at us. We all screamed. We dove on the floor and everyone was crying instantaneously. I looked at Matt from head to toe before I knelt down with my hands behind my head. Everyone was staring at our classmate who was laying on the floor in a pool of blood. He groaned and tried to get up. Matt walked over to him. Fist clenching the bat, he raised the bat in the air and delivered a blow to his face. Blood splattered everywhere and he laid there motionless. There was more gunshots from below. The school rattled with gunshots and screaming. The first thing I had on my mind was my girlfriend. I needed to make sure she was safe. Phones. Give them to me now. Matt pointed his gun at us. What the fuck do you want from us? Someone shouted at him as people began to put their phones in a bag. Matt looked at the guy and walked over to him. A distraction, I thought to myself. I quickly pulled out my phone and tried to shoot a quick text to my girlfriend. Are you okay? I typed at near superhuman speed. Then I slid my phone face down under the desk. Matt hit the guy who questioned him. He walked over to me to get my phone. It's not with me. I forgot it in the gym locker. Matt looked at me for a good 10 seconds before moving on to the next kid. After collecting all the cell phones and threw them in his bag. Alright motherfuckers, I'm in charge now. You're gonna listen to whatever I say and you'll do exactly as I say. Or you'll end up like your friend over there. He motioned to our dead classmate. Do you understand? We all nodded. Let me try to provide some background on Matt. Or at least whatever I know about him. I'm sure there is something wrong with him. We'd always hear him talking to himself while his head is down in his arms. He hangs out with outcasts in our grade and is very distant from almost everyone. I don't want to say this, but I'm sure his family practically disowned him. One of my friends told me that they once saw his dad pick him up from school and Matt had to practically jump in the car while the car was still going like 30 miles per hour. No one recalls ever seeing him with his parents during special events. The reason why I said this is because Matt sat on the teacher's desk and pulled out his phone. He started reading his messages out loud. Doors and stairs are secured. He was reading texts. I could tell because his thumb was doing the swiping motion. Cops are outside. They're trying to find a way in. Matt smiled and started typing. These fuckers are in for a surprise once they try to open the door. I was trying to formulate a plan. One of my dreams had become reality. By the way, I'm sorry if it seems like I'm making this school shooting seem like a good thing. It's most definitely not. But for some reason, I think about these situations out of boredom. I come up with contingency plans in case my school gets shot up or my workplace or the grocery store. I think about these things often and I have no clue why. It's just the person I am. Where's Officer Gary? Matt read out loud again. He's been taken care of, Matt smiled. I've brought him into the gym, Matt read out loud. Good, Kyle is in the gym, Matt said as he typed his text. Hey new kid, Matt read. What the hell does this kid want? Matt asked out loud to himself before typing his message. He stopped talking out loud after he saw someone looking at him. So Matt smashed his face with a bat. This all happened in the span of maybe 40 minutes. We were starving, shaken up, and traumatized. We lost communication with the outside world. So many mutual thoughts are running through our heads, such as what's going to happen to us, our parents, loved ones. Are we going to make it out of this? Why is this happening? After sitting around and doing absolutely nothing for hours, everyone fell asleep in the room. Matt dozed off about 10 minutes before I started typing this. Right when I was sure he was asleep, I reached under the desk and pulled out my phone. I still had about 87% battery. I had a text from my girlfriend. We've talked about what to do in this situation. Are you okay? 1.37 PM. Yeah, I'm in class. Some asshole is here too. 1.38 PM. Shit, he's taking our phones. 1.38 PM. We've talked about this. Please try to get back to me when you can. Gotta go. I texted my family and told them what was going on, and now I'm here, and it's 11.01 p.m. I'm sorry if I seem very disorganized, unlike other entries. There's just so many damn thoughts going on through my mind. I'm going to take a quick moment and list what I know and what I don't know. What I do know. There's a group of these guys holding up the school. The cops can't get in because the doors have either been A, barricaded, or B, blocked in some other way. 
all electronics have been confiscated. This was a planned attack. Matt is new to their group. What I don't know, Matt is new, which means he could have no to little experience in this type of situation. However, I don't know that. He could have experience, or he could have no idea what he's doing. These guys are armed, and so is Matt. I don't know what their plan is. I don't know why they decided to shoot up the school. A lot of you may be screaming at your screens that now is the time to go up to Matt and fucking bust his ass. As tempting it is to try, now isn't the time. I need answers. I need to know why this is happening and what they want from us. This isn't Columbine or Virginia Tech. This isn't your typical school shooting. They aren't shooting this school up because of rage. They want something and I need to find out what it is. I need rest. I have what it takes to get to the bottom of this, but I can't do it alone. So if anyone from my school happens to see this, please contact me. We need to take these guys down. It's time to put my skills to the test. I'll try to provide an update tomorrow if I can, if I succeed. If not, spread this news to everyone. We don't know how long this holdup will last, but this information could save lives. I gotta throw my phone back onto the desk now. See ya. It's 12.16pm. I'm alive. I'll try to update soon. It's now 3.37. I posted an update about an hour ago, but it was taken down. 421. Fuck. This is not going as planned. 435. We barricaded ourselves in the classroom. Expect a huge update tonight. It's Friday, March 3rd, 2017. 6.07pm. A lot has happened since yesterday. Shit's about to go down soon. And when this is all settled, I'll let you know what happened yesterday and what's about to happen right now. This ends tonight. March 4th, 2017, 10.17 a.m. We did it. We are alive and out of the school. Here's a scope of what happened. I used Matt's phone to lure one of his friends into a bathroom where we ambushed him and beat his head in with whatever we got. There were still three guys left and were to be found in the library, gym, and the other one was wandering the school. At approximately 1 a.m. last night, I rallied up my buddies and we decided to turn the tables and bring the fight to them. We got the police on the phone and ran to a side entrance and they helped us deactivate the devices. Thankfully, Brad is some sort of electronic genius so we got this done no problem. The police got in the building and they tried to force us to get out but we did not comply and wanted to help evacuate the building. We ran into the classrooms and told them it's safe to get out and where to exit. Dakota ran back to our classroom and took the third floor with Jake. Ryan and Brad took the second floor and Alex and I took the first. I passed the library and heard gunshots. I ran for cover and pulled out the gun I had and more gunshots went off. Then I realized the gunshots were coming from inside the library. I peeked inside through the door and one of those fuckers started executing the students inside. I can't run to get a cop because by the time I get back with one, they could all be dead. If I scream for help, he'll hear I'm outside and then kill all at once. I had to take matters into my own hands. I approached the door and got myself together. I had to shoot and I had to kill. I opened the door and clicked to safety. The first thing I saw was the fucker standing on the table and about seven bodies surrounding him. He spun around and I lifted my gun. Two gunshots filled the room. His bullet grazed my arm and my bullet met its mark on the left side of his chest. He yelled and fell off the table. Everyone in the room screamed and I yelled at them to get the hell out of there. I ran to the guy and finished him off with a bullet to his head. I got out of the library and heard yelling and gunshots from the floor above me. My buddies and I regrouped and we went for the gym. We heard yelling down the hall. Police had swarmed the outside of the gym. Don't go in. He's threatening that he has a bomb. Have you tried going upstairs to the balconies? Alex asked. I said we can't go in because he's threatening that he has a bomb. I thought about what to do. The police couldn't enter through the upstairs part of the gym, through the wrestling and weight balconies. Then I had an idea. I pulled out Matt's cell phone and called the guy who was in there. His name was Kyle. Let us in and let them out. This fight is over. Those innocent people are not a part of this. We'll bring no weapons and no cops. We just want to talk. We'll figure something out. you will walk out of this alive as long as we can all come to an understanding. He was quiet for a moment. About 50 people ran out of the gym and we were escorted out by a few police officers. We put our guns down and the police gave us the okay. We walked in. There had to be at least 50 kids in there with this guy. He had his gun pointed down at them and in his other hand was a button that was wired to the inside of his jacket. He lowered his hand with the button. What is it that you want? We tried to sound as peaceful as possible. We're listening. 
All he wanted was to be known. We slowly walked towards him as we listened. We see all these popular guys, athletes, hosts, anything. They're all known for doing something, he continued. Then one day, I realized with these school shootings, no one ever forgets those. Virginia Tech, Columbine, Sandy Hook. No one forgets those. No one ever will. So I thought if we can orchestrate the greatest school shooting ever known to man, we'll definitely be remembered for years. So you did all of this just to know people know you exist. Jake said with disgust. You gotta do what you gotta do. Well, this isn't just your typical school shooting. We've managed to keep you guys in here for three nights straight. I'm sure you've beaten the record. He paused for a moment. The police aren't planning on taking you alive, so I suggest you come with us and we'll reason with them so you get out of here alive. We walked towards him. He raised his gun at us. Back off. We complied. You and your friends have killed maybe over a hundred people. The police have orders to shoot on sight and we want you to leave this building in handcuffs, not in a bag, I reasoned. No one deserves death, no matter what they did to think they deserve it. I don't plan on getting out of here alive, he said. He turned his gun to me and fired. I was pushed onto the floor. I turned and saw Alex laying on the ground with my friends on the floor kneeling beside him. I looked up at Kyle, but then another gunshot rang. Kyle fell face first onto the floor. We looked to the wrestling balcony, where the sound it came from. It was Matt. Please forgive us. He then turned the gun onto himself, and another shot rang out. Jake got up and ran to the door and alerted the police, and I got up and went to Alex. This guy just saved my life. They got Alex out of there, and we got out of the school. I told the officers to get up to the wrestling balcony and get Matt's body. Somehow, Matt must have went around the police and entered the wrestling balcony through the other side. The police did one final sweep of the building to make sure everyone was out. Once we got out, Alex was put in an ambulance and immediately driven off to the hospital. As for me and my friends, we were also put in an ambulance and brought to the hospital. I had completely forgot I was wounded in my arm. Right now, I'm in the hospital typing this on my phone. We'd managed to save as many lives as we possibly could, even though that doesn't mean everyone. But we did what we could. The school is going to be shut down for quite a long time now. I don't know if we'll have to go to a different school for now, but we'll see.